This video is an introduction to absolute value equations. Absolute value equations are equations that are of the form the absolute value of something is equal to something else. And in absolute value equations, the unknown is within the absolute value bars. Uh, this could look like, for example, the absolute value of x is equal to 4. And let's think about what this means. We're trying to identify all possible values whose absolute values are 4 units away from 0. And 1 is usually pretty obvious to everyone, and that is when x itself is equal to 4. Um, but there's also another one, right? 4 is 4 units from 0 on one side, but what about on the other side uh, of, the, of the number line? Um, that would be x is equal to negative 4. So this one has two solutions. Uh, if we plug in 4 and see the absolute value, the absolute value of 4 is 4, which makes that true. Or if we plug in negative 4 for x, we get the absolute value of negative 4 is equal to 4. So with absolute value equations, it is very common to have two solutions. We look at both the positive case and the negative case. And what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about how to determine when there are two cases or some other number of cases. So in this example, I showed that the absolute value of something was equal to something positive. Anytime we have the absolute value equal to something positive, there's always going to be two cases. So I'm going to say the absolute value of x is equal to a, where a is greater than 0, which indicates a is positive. Anytime we see this, there are two solutions. And the two solutions would be whatever's inside the absolute value equaling the number itself. So in, in this case up here, it was 4. Or the other solution can be found by setting what's uh, inside the absolute value bar is equal to the negative of that number, equal to negative a, which would be in this case negative 4. It's important to note here, while I just have a single variable, this could be an entire expression. It could be 2x plus 3 one half x minus 17. So there could be more than just x. So it, when you get to this point, you might actually have to get the variable by itself from here. Um, this is just the setup of what it would look like. And there are videos later on where we do examples of solving absolute value equations. OK, so that's one case is when we have two solutions when the absolute value is equal to something positive. Another case would be when the absolute value is equal to 0. So I don't need to say equals a, because 0 is just one single number. So I'm going to say just equal to 0. and this just means, OK, how many things are 0 units away from 0 on a number line? That would be 1. So in this case, there is one solution. And that one solution is when what's inside the absolute value bars is equal to 0. So that would have one solution. Lastly, so we've talked about positive. We've talked about 0. That leaves us with negative. What happens when the absolute value is equal to a, where a is something negative? And we represent that by saying a is less than 0. Well, absolute value is always non-negative, so it is a contradiction to say, well, it equals something negative. A non-negative can't equal something negative, so we would say there is no solution. Okay, so we have three different cases to consider. The absolute value is equal to something positive, the absolute value is equal to zero, or the absolute value is equal to something negative. And when I'm talking about this, it's important to note that you have to have the absolute value isolated before you consider the three different cases, or however, when you're trying to determine the number of solutions. If the absolute value is not yet by itself on one side of the equal sign, you want to use inverse operations to move anything else to the other side. So for example, if we have the absolute value of n plus 2 minus 4 equals 5, I don't know whether there's two solutions, one solution, or zero solutions yet, because the absolute value is being subtracted by 4. So first, before we consider that, we're going to add 4 to both sides. And that would give us the absolute value of uh, n plus 2 is equal to 9. Now we have the absolute value is equal to something positive, so I can determine there will be two solutions. And those two solutions, well, I'm not going to go through all of the steps, but those two solutions just mean that inside the absolute value could either be 9 itself, or negative 9. One more thing to note, if we have something being multiplied to the absolute value, so if I have negative 3 times the absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to negative 12, it's really important that we don't distribute the negative inside the absolute value. In fact, we don't use the distributive property at all when we're talking about absolute value. Instead, what we're going to do, since negative 3 is being multiplied to undo multiplication, we will divide both sides by negative 3. If you distribute negative 3 inside the absolute value, it will give you a wrong answer. And even though half the time, if it's something positive, it actually will give you the right answer, it's incorrect mathematically, 
and your professor will probably take off points if you do that. So instead, instead of distributing, which you can't do with absolute value, you want to divide both sides by that value. So when you divide both sides by negative 3, that will give me the absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to 4. And then again, the, now the absolute value is isolated. It's equal to something positive. So I know that this particular equation would have two solutions. 